Hey, Ronnie here from fourwheeling in westernaustralia.com. Welcome to another tip video. This one here has come about due to the amount of comments and hints and ideas and tips that I've received on the previous video. Fridge versus icebox, which is better for overlanding and which do you need? So there was a flood of awesome ideas in the comments below on that video. So I've decided to use a lot of those awesome tips and combine them with a few of my own and make this video so you guys can get more out of your refrigerator and your icebox and help save some money and just some other general really cool ideas. Before we get into it though, this video is split into three sections. The first one is general, the second one is icebox only and the third one is your fridge. And they'll be timestamped below so if you come back later and you want to see just that one tip again, you can go to the timestamp and go straight to that section of the video. So let's get into it now. When you're not using your fridge or your icebox, always store them with something wedged inside it. Like that. That way you let air come in and out. Never shut them airtight. This is why I suggest leaving the lid open when you store your esky or fridge, because you end up with mould like this, also it's going to stink. So pre-chilling, and when I say pre-chilling, I mean with your ice box specifically, put a bag of ice in there, seal it up the day before if possible, and all your drinks, either buy them really cold, like straight from the bottle shop, or cool your drinks down in your fridge at home, and then when you're ready, Whack the ice and your drinks in at the same time and it'll last longer. It won't melt the ice straight away. With your fridge, however, it's a bit of a different thing to do. If the fridge is mounted on your vehicle permanently, like a lot of you guys would have, even if this is on the back of your vehicle or wherever it is mounted in your vehicle, plug a household outlet into that as well and then you will save your battery. Bring both. Bring your fridge and an ice box. That way you can use your fridge for your food and your ice box for your drinks. Now for me it's not too much of a problem because I have a 60 litre fridge but if you have a 40 or 30 litre fridge it might be an idea to bring a small ice box or even a big ice box just for your drinks and then you can keep all your foods nice and dry and cool in your fridge. The full ice box and the full fridge is more efficient than a half full, especially with the fridge, because that empty space is just air which the refrigerator is going to try and cool down. So if you fill it right up and everything is cool in there, it's going to run a lot less and run way more efficiently, thus saving your battery power as well. To get more efficiency out of your refrigerator and to help stop the ice melting in your ice box, you can line the back of your vehicle, if, it's, if that's where it is, with reflective material and that'll help prevent the heat from coming in. For your fridge in specific, you can get bags for them, which kind of helps them as well. Icebox time. Specifically icebox tips and we're going to start with different options of cooling things. Now I'm going to start with a really obvious one and you're going to be saying, yeah Ronnie, we know that. Ice bricks are a good option because they're not going to make, well, they're not going to leak water everywhere and um, severely risking all your food getting soggy and contaminated. So we have all different types of ice bricks. But let's step it up a little notch. If you've got young kids and they are teething, that's a handy one to bring. Of course, you have the medical ones. So that's another good option. It's solely obvious. Now, let's bring out the party ice. Oh, yeah! This is your most common ice, and this is the stuff that'll melt the quickest, but it's a lot easier to get in amongst all your stuff. But this stuff here will increase the chance of your food going soggy by a lot. This stuff melts really quick. Now, things are about to get a lot cooler. Can't believe I just said that. Right, so we'll start with 
the bottles. Now this is the free stuff, you don't have to pay for this. Okay, so you've got your little drink bottles. These are great because these will also prevent your food from going soggy and once they're melted, you can drink them as a drink. And you've got your Powerade bottle as well, a lot more solid as well. And then you've got your milk cartons. Obviously you've got to rinse these out really well, otherwise they still taste like milk. But another great option. Just something I'd like to point out here, when you do fill bottles up like this, don't fill it all the way up. What happens is when water freezes, it expands by roughly 10%, just under 10%, which means if you fill it to the top, it's going to crack the seal, and then once it starts melting, it's gonna leak out and it's gonna cause soggy food and stuff like that. Now, this is when you think outside the box. Now, I think most of you guys are aware of the ice cream containers. This is a really good one. Get a nice big solid block and it's going to take a lot longer to melt than your party ice. But there's more. Meat containers. Now I learned this one recently and this is a prime example of thinking outside the box. You get some nice slabs out of this. That's just your meat tray. You can get deeper meat trays too. Which I have here. A deeper meat tray. There we go, look at the size of that block. And the cool thing about these is you can stack them. Okay, well you gotta wait till one freezes before you stack the other. I don't think too many people have thought of this one. This, my friends, viewers, is a snap lock bag. And I have filled it up and I have successfully frozen it. And I didn't overfill it, which I'm glad about. That was all I was in there, but there'll be plenty more ways of you know, containers and stuff to fill ice in. I'm sure you guys are gonna put some in the comments below that you've already done. Uh, really clever ideas. We only have a small freezer like this. And I managed to do all of these in that little freezer there, all at the same time. Line the bottom with all your drinks, then some ice, and then on top of that, on top of all that ice, Get a nice big sturdy container like this one and then take these sandwiches for example, bag them in a snap lock bag, leave a bit of air in them so they've got a bit of cushioning from the air that's in the bag. Even if you have meats in a meat tray that's sealed, I still highly recommend double bagging it because should any moisture get into this container, it is still sealed. And you could even just put this straight in the ice box. It's double sealed, it should be pretty safe. Other options, just like a cover in the fridge. The fridge is more forgiving for options when it comes to storing stuff. The ice box is a bit more of a challenge. Uh, tomatoes, mash them in so they don't not get knocked about and put these containers inside the big container. There's less chance of these opening up and going everywhere because you now have a double seal on this container. This is fairly safe. You can knock it around a fair bit too. Obviously, fill more in there so there's less space for stuff to move around. But this tip is for those guys running a single battery system in their vehicle and still running a refrigerator. Now what can happen is, if you're at camp for a couple of days, the fridge can drain your battery or even in your driveway. So as insurance, if you are by yourself out in the middle of nowhere, a jumper cables aren't gonna do you much good. But you can get um, these products here. These are jump packs. This tiny unit is capable of jumping a you know, 4.5 litre V8 turbo diesel like my vehicle. And I have tested this one. This one I got from Earth Track 4x4. Um, this is like your cheaper sort of version. And this is a good insurance policy to start your car. You get your little clamps you put on your battery. You've got to make sure this is charged as well though. And then NOCO also do one. And this is like your bit more expensive sort of style. And it's the same principle. Uh, this one here though can start up to a 6 litre turbo diesel. Which is, um, packs quite a bit of punch just in this little pack here. Um, but they also serve as um, power outlets too. But I'll cover these more in another video or perhaps during a trip.
This tip is for those who are running a single battery system in their vehicle and there are a few ways you can get around it. Now if you haven't bought a fridge yet, you can go out and buy one that runs on LPG gas and 12 volt power, so your DC plug as well. And what you can do is when it gets to camp, because that's the main time it's going to drain your battery is when the vehicle's not running, you can then switch to LPG gas and it can run for quite a while, I think up to a week, even longer on a 9 kilo gas bottle. Solar panel, either installed on your vehicle or you can get the foldable one, like this one here. Now obviously there's a bit of a catch to it, you need the sun in order to power your solar panel. But keep in mind, the time when you really need this and the fridge is really going to drain your battery is on a hot sunny day, so it's kind of a perfect match anyway. If you store your fridge like I do, in the back of my tray, out in the elements, through river crossings, driving in the rain, or just muddy, dusty environments. It's a good idea to get one of these two items, like your Inox Free, or something similar, or your WD-40, and just hit the compressor area and all the electricals as well with a bit of water displacement spray. And it'll go a long way to prevent anything from going wrong there. Find one of your favourite beers in a can, like I have, bottle, can, same amount in each, then I would strongly suggest buying a can for two reasons. One, they stack way better. You can put line the whole bottom of your fridge with them. And two, they won't shatter. Just to emphasise on your cans, as you can see, they stack very well. You probably all already know this. But here's another trick that I do. In these little 10 packs, I will cut it and it's nice and neat in here. And then stuff's not going to collapse and fall on top of each other as I'm pulling my drinks out. So that's another cool way. And you can keep the cardboard. You can throw your beers in it all. You know, your Coke cans, anything like that. But say if you are one of those persistent people and you have to drink out of a bottle, well, there is a way you can put them in your fridge and reducing the risk of them shattering. This is probably one of the better ways to have your beers packed, but they will still shatter. I've had it happen many times before I switched to cans. These ones here are no good either. You can hear them clanging. But there is one way you can do it. All right, so prepare to be bombarded with some ideas here. What I do do with bottles, because I can't get Peroni in cans, and I like Peroni as well, what you can do is, you can get this style with a strong cardboard div division, then you can stack them like this, and they will not break. Will not break. Another place to store your bottles is on the edges of your refrigerator so they are cornered by well they're blocked in by cans and perhaps meat bacon whatever you got in here sandwiches and you'll note that I'll have them in all the corners uh, I know you can't bring that many glass bottles but it's a way of doing it but wait there's another way too so the other way is you have stubby holders Beer coolers. We call them stubby holders here in Australia. Now these, they're not going to smash any bottles and they're very unlikely to have the heads clash like that anyway. So that is another good way. And I know a few, well a few of my mates, um, they do this. They line every single beer with a stubby holder and it prevents them from smashing. So if you want to bring a lot of them, this is your best way. And here's the other thing. You finish your beer, you're worried about glass smashing or something, don't toss it out obviously, you've got to bring it home. Empty bottle, I'll put it straight in there again until I reach a rubbish bin and then I'll throw it out. Another stacking tip, you've got your bacon or your meat, put it around the edges. So I'll toss this down here, right on the edge next to the wall of the fridge. Maybe one over here. Now these are frozen, it's a bit easier when they're not frozen because they sort of mold to the edges. That way, 
it's in the coolest possible spot and your meat is not going to get you know, spoiled. It's going to last uh, those few more days longer. Because if you leave it on the, on the top here, that is the warmest place in your fridge. Because this is, you know, you open your fridge, all that cold air is going to escape straight away. So always put your meat on the sides or at the bottom or have a dedicated spot for them. That's why I stack these in cardboard boxes so I can make a whole meat section here and not have to worry about stuff collapsing onto it. Here's another thing, if you know that you're going to have steak the next night or you know today, the first thing in the morning you pull this out of your freezer, if you have a freezer with you of course, and you place it in your fridge at the top and by the time you get to your camp later on or it's dinner time, this should be thawed out and ready to cook. Another stacking tip, if you have tomatoes or any pre-cut vegetables, get these little containers, They're very handy and they stack, so they get stackable ones in fact. And if you have something soft like tomatoes, what you want to do is you want to have a container that can only just fit them in, so you squeeze them a little bit, that way they're not going to get banged around. I can smash this around and they shouldn't get bruised and go all manky. Hey, well I hope you found these tips useful and if you did please give the video a thumbs up or even better share the video around. Uh, if you have any tips of your own please add them in the comments below. I'm sure there's plenty of other things that can be done with the icebox and the fridge to get more use out of them. Thank you very much for watching and you can support the creation of videos like this or any of the other stuff I do at patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. Thanks again and I'll see you in another video. Oh, hang on. If you are actually wondering if you need a fridge or an icebox, there is a video link down here and it'll take you straight to that video and we'll answer your question for you. Otherwise, I'll see you in another video.